sheep are on a new pasture today. Just giddy. Nightly's over there. Looking at the girls, getting ideas. It's mirror read. looking for. I have a few items that came in the mail this week I wanted to share the unboxing with. The first one is a package from Fairly Fiber Fun, which is Kim Boyce. I'll put her information in my show notes. She has a YouTube channel. She also has a store. Um, she focuses on going to different farms in her area, local farms, and... Um, helping them sell their fiber through her store, uh, raw fleeces. And she also has um, dyed stuff that she sells. So she's got a neat um, little business model that she's working. So um, she just became a distributor for a scouring product. And I remember I said in one of my last videos that I was going to commit to Doing a proper scour, and so this is my, my start with that.
One Unicorn Power Scour. So I officially now have a proper scour that I'll be using for washing Nita's fleece, which is the next one on my list. Yeah, this is funny. It says, remove soil, stains, and odors, lanolin and oil, wine spills, and pet stains. So I made a joke that I really have a hard time getting the wine stains out of my girls' fleeces because they're drinking wine all the time out there. Anyway, so I got that. This is her card. It's a cute little fairy with a spinning wheel. And like I said, I'll put her contact information in the notes. She's got some really neat stuff. Hand dyed yarns. She spins your pet's fur. And she teaches, she's got a nice YouTube channel with a lot of really educational um, videos that she shares. So this is some, just some raw wool. She used this as packaging, how clever. And just some different breed lots, so that'll be interesting. Ooh. I don't know who this is from, but it's pretty. Came in the shipment. Oh, goody. Oh, this is very generous. Oh, these are cute. Let's see if I get to... Oh, that's so sweet. Little earrings. They're also skeins. She and I are also friends on Instagram. So this is a fiber rinse that she included in here as a sample to try. So that'll be something I'll be using and enjoying, I'm very certain. And this came super fast. I ordered it, and within two, I know the day that I ordered it, she shipped it because I got the notification email. But then, um, then that just you know, came really fast, so really good service. Just got a, a good, good work ethic. The next package I got that I was going to open open is um, from Fair and Pfeffer, and this is from San Angelo, Texas, and what this is, is our micron data. So when we moved the ram lambs to their own pen, we um, took fiber samples from them and then sent these into um, Texas A&M to get them evaluated. And we always provide return postage so that they send us our fiber samples back. So we have those for our records and we can include them and make a note that those are part of this particular evaluation. So you always get a nice letter and then our receipt. So it was um, 12 samples at $5 a sample and then we give them $10 just to ship it, which is more, but we really like to support this organization. They do great things and we would, I don't know what we'd do without them as far as working our clock. This is what you get, one roll per sheep, and then a full packet of each individual sheep. So there's two sections. This one section is one ram, and this section is another ram. Remember, Rich talked to us about the histogram. There's your data, and there's your dot micron um, average fiber diameter across along the staple. They emailed these to us, so we have already seen these. And we were very pleased with the results. And I've actually listed, I think I have put five ram lambs for sale now that we had this information to help us decide what we want to do. So, so that's all good. My recycled packaging coming back to me. So this now it's been used three times. <laughs> 
and these are the samples of each ram. So it was, they were, this is only a six month old sample, so they weren't really long, but they were able to provide us data, and I was talking with Rich about it, and he said that typically it's pretty close to what you get when you have the full length samples that you send out in March. So each uh, ram lamb, ooh, it smells, smells good. Each ram lamb sample gets put in the bag with his ear tag number, and then when they provide us the data, along this column is the ear tag that corresponds. So like I said, we keep these together and then we know what, what was tested. The next package comes from uh, one of our Fine Fleece Shetland Sheep Association contacts. I'm not going to put her information up, but um, I think I know what this is. I think these are our fiber locks from the Fine Fleece Shetland Sheep Association fleece judging that we're doing, which and I are doing. We've got one, two, four entries. It says entry number three is the other category. Entries one, two, and four are the RAM category. So it looks like this is all we've got in terms of fleeces to judge for the Fine Fleece Shetland show. So Rich and I will be doing that as soon as we can, probably trying to get to it either, well, by the end of the week. And then um, we'll, we'll do a recording of our results. That. So this is the last um, thing I want to unbox in front of you guys. This is, I'm, I know this is the Magicraft little gem. I ordered two little gems. They're up in my shop. And um, I think they call them little gems when you listen to them. At first I thought they were saying gem, little gems, little gems, but that's their funny accent, which I love. I'm getting used to it. Um, but one thing I want to see is the, uh, they've got a new bobbin design, and I don't think I'm letting the cat out of the bag too much because I know anything I order from here on out is going to have that new bobbin. And there's a lot of, a lot of work went into it and a little inconvenience as far as bobbin availability for a while in terms of some of the kits and stuff, but now that the bobbins are here, oh, look at them. So this is the new handy. The new plastic bobbin for Magicraft. It's a lot lighter. Um, pretty design. Okay, so I'm just reading my newsletter from Magicraft and it says the benefits are much lighter weights, fun design, quietness of the wood bobbins with new plastic edges. So the new wood bobbins, I'll show you a picture of what they look like. This is a, if you can see that, but that's the um, bobbin that comes on the Aura. So it's wooden cut out with plastic around it, and apparently that's supposed to dissipate noise that used to happen. I don't know, I, I have an Aura on order. I haven't received it yet. Gorgeousness of seeing the yarn through the cutouts, and the extra choice is now available for standard and jumbo sizes. I have placed an order for all the different types of bobbins, and so those will be coming in with my next order. So yeah, so now the little gems coming with these very nifty new bobbins. So that's all the stuff I wanted to unpack and share with you. Hopefully you enjoyed that. So in this segment, I'm going to show you how I make my self-striping yarns. And I'm going to show you the spinning of the singles as well as chain plying. And just take you through my process so you can see how I make the self-striping yarn from my sheep's wool. Alright, so on the bobbin you can see the variety of colors that I've already spun up. 
And I'm down to my last round. So each color, there's going to be approximately 0.11 ounces of wool left. Maybe, maybe I'm down to my second to last round. We'll see. And uh, right now, I'm finishing up these brown locks, which are about 0.11. Now, one of the things that's interesting when I looked at the brown, because I pull from a variety of different fleeces, it's uh, like I said before, it's when I run out and I don't have enough to make a full one ounce bat, so it goes into this. So here you see two morets. This is the one I'm spinning right now. That I ended up, I actually had to sort a little bit because one was so much darker than the other one. I no idea who these came from. They just kind of get put into the pool. Okay, so I'm kind of doing, now that I've learned long draw, I sort of, depending on what the lock feels like, I'm doing sort of a hybrid of, um, The long draw and the kind of the short forward, and I don't know, maybe it's called supported. I just feel like this is a lot easier on my hands. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm wearing the magnetic copper bracelets because just started, I don't know, maybe it's because of all the weaving outside work added to the fiber work, which is starting to feel a little strange, so. Trying to come up with ways to minimize that. Doing a Normally I have that red overhead light on, so it looks it's kind of weird trying to monitor the gauge. That really makes the video look terrible, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, I've got another lock here that I'm going to add. This soft brown, oh, on the short side. And I've mentioned this before when I'm spinning from the lock I always do the skin side pull from the skin side and I always sort of fluff it up a little bit so that I've got a lot of loose ends that are already grabbing onto that single and I will repeat my logic for spinning my locks from the skin side is that the skin side has a higher concentration of residual lanolin even after I've washed it you can still feel it if you've ever spun any of my hand wash stuff. And there's much more of it on the skin end than there is on the sun end. The sun end is a lot drier. So if I pull from the sun end, all that wet stuff kind of drags and it generates more naps. That's been my experience. As it's pulling itself through the lock, it grabs other bits with it. And it just gets a lot more nappy. I'd like to show you what it looks like when I change color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin for a while until I get to the end of the brown here, the moret. Moret. I was <laughs> watching some of the Shetland Island uh, footage we've got from different um, fine fleece Shetland sheep breeders that have gone over and interviewed and stuff, and the accents kill me. I just love it. Moret. So I'm coming to the end of the uh, brown stripe. A few seconds here. And I like to get as close to the end as possible. I give myself a little bit of fluff for the next color to catch on to. So not a lot. Just that little tiny bit of fluff. Alright, so brown. 
as you can see from my handy little holder here, was color number four. So the fifth color is white. And all my white is the same shade, so I don't have to play around with uh, um, trying to sort the colors or anything. So I'm going to turn on my scale. For it to zero out, and then I'm going to I'm gonna weigh all of it. So it's perfect. It's 2-2. Two, two. So I'm after this white one, which is color number five, then I'll be on my last round after that. Alright, so I'm just trying to weigh out exactly 0.11. And I put the balance back in its little slot. The scale's gonna go all haywire, but I went out and got myself a nice digital scale. I was trying to make do with one a friend gave me, but my um the display was getting so I could hardly even read it, so I had to break down and buy a new one. <laughs> so this is what I use for any of my indoor weighing. So this is 0.11 ounces of the white. Now the white, going from the brown to the white, is a tricky color transition. Some of the color transitions, like going from the white to the fawn, isn't so bad. They're close enough. Um, and what I mean by tricky is I really don't want to get the peppermint stick or barber pole or whatever effect. I really want to minimize that as much as I can. Um, because when I get to chain plying, there'll be another opportunity for that to happen. And so I want to just minimize it so that when I knit with it, it's really only going to be like two stitches in the pattern. So this is the white wool. It's kind of fun to do this because all of them are a little bit different. So the white is longer. It's not as soft as the brown was, but it's still lovely. Beautiful, crimpy. Um, so, you know, as I do, kind of fluffing up the ends so that they grab on nicely. <laughs> it's probably mostly static doing that. Um, and just helping twist it a little bit with my fingers. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll just get rid of that once I know it's latched on nice so that I, you know, can really minimize that. Okay, and that's the join. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my flyer over because it's kind of fun to watch the striping happen. So I'm going to shift the flyer over a little bit um, so that it's this is where it was on the brown. And now we're going to get it's actually there's a white stripe already there, but it'll be at the same level. Then I'll have a brown, a white, and a fawn. Let's see, dark gray and light gray, so they'll be the full spectrum across. All right, so I'm going to finish this off. Let me watch me do this last. A little bit of white. Magicraft announced the new bobbins today. So I had a little spoiler in my um, little gem unboxing. The little gems I just got, as well as the aura wheel I just got, are all packed with the new bobbins. The, new black. the little gem is packed with the black plastic. The aura is actually going to be packed with the wooden ones. I'm going to open that up and look at those, see what they look like. I have a pretty big order for all the different bobbins, so waiting on that to come in, and then I'll I'll show you all the new bobbins.
Okay, so yeah, so I'll finish spinning up all this. It's going to take me a little bit of time, and then we'll get back together so I can show you the chain plane. I finished spinning my singles. So all my cavities are empty now. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I go about chain plying this. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the flyer and I do that by treadling once I get it loose and it just comes right off. I'm going to use that same flyer for when we do the chain plying. And then I'm going to, I just took off the, the brake band and I'm easily just going to slide the bobbin off of the flyer rod and you can see the colors. I um, have dark brown, that's the white, dark gray, fawn, and then white, and there's a little light gray in the corner here. I can just kind of make it out. So those are just the last spins I did. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bobbin in my very old fashioned lazy cape. This is not this came with my rose. They they send the new lazy cape with the roses now. Um, so one thing I read about chain plying when I first started doing it is that you want to have some tension on the bobbin in the lazy cape to prevent it from spinning too fast and getting ahead of you as you're plying. But I've always used these pencils and there's enough drag that that gives me the, um, the pull that I need to, to be able to chain ply successfully. So now I need another bobbin, an empty bobbin. This is empty-ish. So this is a, a bobbin where rather than trying to match up my, the ends of my singles when I'm spinning two ply yarns on you know two separate bobbins and I ply, inevitably one bobbin has more yarn on it than the other. So I just leave that on here and then at some point when I get enough I'm gonna do a chain ply and have a random self-striping yarn. The one I made today, every single stripe is gonna, should be about the same um, width, but with the way I do this other process, it's very random and really fun, so that's fine. The other thing I do, as I always do when I ply on the wheel, is I reverse the band so that there's no cross on the, the brake band, the tension band. Put my bobbin back on. Adjust the tension. That's good. Switch the flyer hook to the plying side, so the right side of the plier. And once again, after I get my threads lined up, I just treadle to put the flyer on. And then give it a little hand tight there at the end. my first time plying with this flyer. I'm going to flip the hook around. I didn't put that on right. So the, the ring should be closer to the center of the bobbin than that little handle. Bring them through. Need the hook for every guide. Which is different, as I said before, from my delta flyer. The other thing I do is I set the lazy cape up in front of me. Now you can't really see this, but I can see the bobbin and the yarn as it's coming off very clearly. And it's important because I need to be aware of when the color change takes place because there's a special technique I use to make sure that I don't get too much barber pull, which is that well, you know how the barber pole, well, maybe not everybody does, but um, it's like that swirling stripe effect, which I don't care for. It's my personal. All right, so I've got my um, funky thing. Now what i got to do, I haven't chain planned in a while, so, is i got to make a loop.
All right, so I'm plying. So even with chain plying, you're still going to ply opposite for the opposite direction from how you spun your single. So I always spin my singles in a clockwise direction. So now when I'm going to chain ply, I'm going to do it in the counterclockwise. So I'm going to get it started here. I remember how to do this. but now I go fairly slow when I'm chain flying because I don't like it to get real twisted. I'm actually thinking I might be I might switch the band. And this I've heard people say that it's a lot like crocheting. To me, I feel like it's cat's cradle. One of the things I do, and I was told to do this by a really accomplished spinner, and I'm not really sure if it does anything or not, but I trust her enough that I will do what she says. And that is, um, when I get to that point right here, where I'm it's kind of like the, the join between the, the end of the chain, I guess. I give it a little reverse twist with my thumb and forefinger um, just to eliminate what could be a potential weak spot there. A little twist and then continue on. And if it's, if it's not pulling good enough, I might adjust the brake tension. I'll grab with my pinky and lazy finger just to get it a little bit tighter. I do need to adjust though. Okay, so let's pretend I'm taking a break. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to lose this loop. So what I do, I got a different, bunch of different things, but normally I'll just loop it around the, the head of my wheel and do whatever I need to do, go to the restroom or whatever. Alright, so I am going to um, adjust the ratio on my wheel. I just brought the whirl, the band on the whirl, up one to a larger whirl size. I don't have them memorized, but you know, I'm just making sure that it's Okay, then I'm going to grab my loop and my little hand. We'll see if that makes any difference. I've also I put the lazy cake down on the floor and I have the yarn running against my leg, which is giving it enough drag. Yes, I think that was a good move. So I put it on a faster ratio, so it's going to pull more. So I'm looking for the change in color. That's where it's a little interesting. We'll see if I can describe how I do it using words rather than just showing you. It took me ages to figure out how to manage the transition between the colors. And I think the next color is light gray and it's coming up. I can see it coming. Alright, so what I'm going to do, because these colors are so similar, I'm going to put my light on here so that I can see them. So this color transition isn't as is, um, critical because they're similar enough that you won't see the harsh contrast. When I go to the more from, from the 
on, it'll be a real contrast or the dark gray as well. Okay, so here comes the moret. So what I do in order to minimize the barber pole is I eyeball the distance from the loop. So that's, let's call that point A. And this distance here, A to B, and I want to make sure that that distance is equal to the A to C, and C is where the color of the yarn changes from cream to brown. And right now, the distance between A to C is shorter. So I'm going to just adjust this a little bit. It's just an eyeball thing. I think that's pretty good. And so, so, that, so now I try, it's almost like a um, triangle with the two sides equal. And that's what you want, because then when they join, you're not going to have so watch the join. It's very close. It's, okay, so there's maybe five millimeters where I'm dealing with a little bit of barber pole really impossible to see. I'm going to try a different camera angle for the next color transition so that it's easier to see. I let go of my loop and it twisted on itself. So I'm not really, you know, that's probably not really important to the knitters that are using these yarns for whatever, but it is to me. Because when I have it hanging there in my store, I don't like to see, I want to see the five stripe colors. I don't want to see some weird candy cane pattern. Having a hot flash. Alright, I'm going to change the angle of the camera. And so like I said before, don't let this loop, don't let it go. I set it up here on my knob. And we're good. I'm gonna go pretty. I do. I guess I do this thing where I grab the strand with my pinky just to get it nice and taut. Otherwise, you get a bump, and I don't really care for that. Obviously, why would you want that? And that's where having a tensioned. Lazy Kate would be really helpful, right? Because it's going to pull a little bit tighter. This is kind of turning a little bit faster than I than the optimal. All right. So the purpose of doing the chain ply is you get you have more control over your color shift on the plied yarn, and you also you get a three ply yarn, which is nice. Those Pioneer gloves, they just feel so terrific. I should be wearing them while I do this. I'm watching for the color shift. seen too much difference. Um, this is the first time I've done chain plying with my new flyer, the fine flyer, and I'm not really feeling anything too... Oopsie. So this is one of those ones where the color shift was so gradual that I actually missed it. I'm onto the fawn already, and um, the color shift is so gradual, it's not actually going to matter, so that's cool. Let's see, so there's no hardly. Let's see. Sorry. The color shift is pretty, pretty good. I'm happy with that.
All right, so now we're onto the fawn. I have a tension lazy cade in my store, which I totally should just break it out and use it for myself, but no, this is fine. This is one of those um, jobs you really can't, I can't watch TV or anything while I'm doing this because I'm conscious of the color changing and also just watching to make sure that I don't like make the join be like where I've got a bit of a nep in the yarn <coughs> to make the join even that much more prominent. So I'm expecting to get comments from my viewers that are more proficient in spinning to kind of critique me. I'm finding that one of the benefits of having this um, blog is that I'm learning a lot from people that are watching me do stuff and making suggestions of resources to look at or um, just, you know, giving me tips and pointers. So. I really appreciate that. I don't take criticism as a negative. Okay, let's see, I'm still on the fawn. Sometimes the fawn, I can't remember what the colors were, the, se the sequence of colors. Okay, here comes, nope, that's still fawn. So it looks like my fawn I think I've gone to gray. <laughs> and there it is right there. So the gray starts right there. So like I said, I want the distance for the triangle to be half, and that's about right. Gosh, I'm getting all flanged up here. I remember the gray had a lot of variation. It was almost like uh, maybe I'm on the dark gray. Oh, I'm on the dark gray. What the heck? And it killed me to write down the sequence of colors. Would it have? Oh well, it makes it funner. Sure, but I think this could be Georgiana, which she is a uh, Shayla, which is one of those pretty blue gray that you get with the Duluth jean, and it's not cat mugget, so cat mugget grays can give you this pretty blue gray. But she, Georgiana, is solid for the pattern. If you guys remember the five patterns. And then, I didn't talk about it, but she's um, got the dilute gene, which dilutes the black to this gray. And in the presentation, I called it modified. And I've learned since then 
that it's more accurate and more universal to call it dilute. Which is actually he's playing this game online. It's a horse breeding game, and they talk about dilute as the way to change the color from solid. Right. So I'm just carefully. I say that every time I'm being careful and then I and I screw it up every time I get back. Alright, so I'm coming to the end of the dark gray. There's the fawn. So the distance from here to here is supposed to equal the distance from here to where the color shifts. And I'm thinking that's pretty good. It's pretty close. Great. Very pleased with that, Joy. How's it look on the bobbin? Looks good. Let's give it a shift. I always forget to do the hook, move the hook as I change the colors. I think that makes such a pretty photograph, and I never remember. I had a couple bumpy spots, which is not where I want to make the join. I want those to get smooth. And that's just because it just creates a little bit of a bump, which I don't want. I'll do one more color join and then I'm going to. I'm just going to let that little nip go. Knitting hides a multitude of sins once you knit stuff up. I'm knitting that long draw skein, which was just a hot mess. And oh my goodness, it's, it's just so cute. It's like a cute hat, bulky and really bouncy. just started watching this show on HBO. I watch it on my phone. And it's about, it's a British show and it's just like the British baking show, but it's about potters making ceramic pottery dishes and stuff. It's really interesting. I love it. So that's what I'm watching right now while I'm spinning. So as soon as I finish this video, I'll probably put that on. I thinking they should have one about spinning. That would be fun to watch. I would love that. Alright, maybe that would come in a shift. And um, you'll notice that I'm using the brown bobbins. Magic Craft just launched a new bobbin design that's going to be replacing these. So these brown bobbins, you're not going to get them any longer. Um, having said that, I think the rose I have in inventory has the colored bobbins because I think they had run out of the brown before I ordered the rose. Um, so I have an order in for the standard plastic black bobbin as well as um, the wooden bobbins. And I don't know when I'm going to be getting that in, but I'll have those up in the shop. So um, they're supposed to be improved in terms of not as noisy and um, they work on all the wheels. I know the Oro is only able to use the wooden bobbins, so 
my understanding is that that is changed. And then they have cutouts on the side flange part here, so you can see your yarns building up on the bobbin as you're spinning, which is kind of cool. So watch for that. I'll definitely do an unboxing of those when we get here. So that's chain plying. <laughs>